buy a bow tie and sell bean pies, you think that you know you're not part of the living dead. You're just as dead as all those of whom you claim you're trying to raise. Your action against me proves beyond a shadow of a doubt. You're not a black Muslim. You're not black. You're a dark European. And see, since you don't know nothing about me, you don't even know what that is. You want to accuse somebody and talk about somebody, but don't even know them. But I want to make that clear. Now I have to talk and speak the truth of what happened. I'm not going to try to make myself look good. And I'm not going to make them look like they the big bad wolf either. I'm going to tell it just like it was. No more, no less. So let me explain what happened. This does not, again, have nothing to do with Brother Farrakhan at all. Period. Chances are he was never even told of the incident. But I'm going to tell him because it needs to be told. Because this type of situation should be avoided. It should never happen again. This was the type of situation that caused Malcolm to be murdered. And isn't it funny that in the week of Malcolm's assassination that something like this would happen because this is the kind of mentality that caused Brother Malcolm to be murdered. An unarmed man shot down in front of his wife and children. This type of mentality. We lost one of our greatest Warriors were our greatest soldiers because of this mentality of dark Europeans. Not black folks, because black people should have learned a long time ago. Dark Europeans, and that's why I tell y'all, just because somebody say assalamu alaikum, hotel, and all that, just because they have dark skin, don't mean that they have their mindset, their mindset have evolved to black. The dark European those with black skin is your number one enemy. You think it's white folks. Because before you can get started, these dark Europeans will put their foot in your ass first. They are the number one reason why we cannot unify and do what we need to do. Please allow me quickly to describe the situation. It was a Sunday morning, and for some reason, I just wanted to go somewhere, to some place of worship that is more in a line to myself. So the first places that I felt like I wanted to go was the uh, Muhammad's Mosque, or either go visit Pastor Ray Hagen. It was too early to go visit Pastor Hagen's uh, African village, so I decided I'll go uh, listen to Brother, uh, the, the minister of the Nation of Islam here in St. Louis, Brother Donald Muhammad. And I get the uh, emails from them promoting whatever activity they were having on uh, Sunday and it was supposed to be Brother Donald Muhammad. So, when I get to the mosque, they have the big screen, uh, it's not a TV, but anyway, it's some type of big screen where they are webcasting from Chicago and the featured speaker is uh, our brother Ishmael Muhammad. I have nothing against brother Ishmael Muhammad. Nothing at all. I have nothing against no one. However, I wanted to hear, and I was seeking, I wanted to hear brother Donald Muhammad because brother Donald Muhammad, he saw he's a Mississippi brother, has a 
Mississippi twang, you know, Southern twang. I like his style of how he brings the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. I really do not care to listen to Ishmael Muhammad. Now, he is being promoted for being whatever and Brother Farrakhan is pushing and wants everyone to listen to Brother Ishmael and this is done because Brother Ishmael is a son of Elijah Muhammad. Physical son of Elijah Muhammad. And I remember listening to Louis Farrakhan explaining about the Rockefellers and these white people, how they integrate their families and how the Bush family or whatever is integrated and they related, how they make these clans. And so he was trying to say how he wants to blend the Farrakhan line or blood with the Elijah Muhammad's blood line and that sort of thing. My problem with that sort of thinking is that that's the white man. That's how the Caucasian people do it. What are you doing when you're concentrating on the Farrakhan Elijah Muhammad bloodline? You're trying to create division among your people. You're excluding everybody. So you're part of this bloodline. And this is the sad thing about it. In Elijah Muhammad's bloodline, there is nobody physically blood of Elijah Muhammad that has done anything to really uplift his teaching. The greatest helpers of Elijah Muhammad were those who were converted to his teaching. The greatest destroyers of his teaching was, of course, his son, was D. Muhammad that took the nation and flipped and flopped it and totally destroyed what his father built. So why would you, what, what is the benefit of, of an Elijah Muhammad bloodline and Farrakhan bloodline mix? What is the, what is the, the benefit except the exclusion of everybody else? So Brother Farrakhan is speaking and talking about how he wants to mix the Farrakhan bloodline with Elijah Muhammad's bloodline and all like that. Everybody clapping. <laughs> yay, yay. Don't you realize you've been excluded? They don't have nothing to do part of you. You, as far as, if this is the example, he's teaching you're being taken out of the divine. You're not included. So what are you clapping for? You're not part of it. You're not part of Elijah Muhammad. You're not part of Farrakhan bloodline. So what are you clapping for? We're talking about physical bloodline. So there's separation. There's division. Somebody is better than another. You're not part of Elijah Muhammad. The reason why Ishmael Muhammad is on that rostrum is simply because of his bloodline. Because there are many young brothers that represent Minister Farrakhan that teach way better, look better, and is more attractive to the people than Ishmael Muhammad. But Ishmael Muhammad has Elijah Muhammad's blood. So really what is going to happen is that Brother Farrakhan is going to deny the nation life. Because when he passes this world, no one is going to be, nobody's going to gravitate toward this person simply because of his blood. Now, the believers will, as long as they believe, but the masses of the people are not tripping on his blood. When they come to Chicago, they are hoping to hear Minister Louis Farrakhan, and then when they sit in their seats, 
they get disappointed because here comes Ishmael Muhammad. That's the truth. Y'all say that y'all can handle the truth. That's the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that a, a uh, joining of Muhammad and Farrakhan bloodline is division in your family. That's, that's the problem with racism. Because somebody is better. The, the black is inferior while the white is superior. Or uh, gender bias. The male is better than the female. A separation. One is better. Or classism. Because I'm rich. It's the same thing. You're not being part of it. When it should be an inclusion of everybody, why there's a concentration on two families? And that's the family of Elijah Muhammad and the family of Farrakhan. What about you? And you, the little fella out in the audience, y'all the ones doing the real work. You're on the street with the bean pies and the fighter car, but you are being excluded and this clan that's being developed getting all the credit. Don't get angry at me. That's exactly what has happened and happening. You say you can handle the truth. That's the truth of the matter. What you clapping for? You ain't no part of it. When you donate to number two poor, are you getting any of that money? Only the Farrakhan Muhammad family. Ain't that right? You getting angry at me? 